what I try to stress to my Catholic friends is we are biblical. We just don't know it. And when did it ever change? That's my question. This is how God, through the authority of the church, established it. How did it ever change? I get a little bold sometimes. Okay. So, any questions on our three ordained biblical ministers? Yeah. Well, when you just read that, how do you know they weren't, why weren't they made priests? Because, again, we have to go back to the, the Greek words, the Greek text here. In this text, it's called the word di, diakonos. I think that's the Greek word, diakonos. And that's the word used in this text. And that's where we get the word deacon. Remember, we're reading English here. The original is written in Greek. And I got it right here. D-I-A-K-O-N-O-S is the Greek word. Diakonos is used in this text. And that's where we get the word deacon. Okay? It's a very quiet group here. It's making me nervous. Okay. Okay, let's knock off another question. This is going to be an easy one. Question number one. Who is ultimately head of the Catholic Church? Colossians 1.18. We're going to let the Bible answer this for us. Colossians 1.18. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning of firstborn from the dead that in all things he himself might be president. He is the head of the body, the church. And who's this referencing? Christ. Christ. So who is head? Number one question. Who is ultimately head of the Catholic Church? Christ. You sure? Yeah. Okay. If anyone ever asks you Catholics, who is ultimately in charge of the Catholic Church? It's Christ. It's pretty simple. It was Christ who established his church. And since he established it, he's the CEO. He's in charge of it. It's his church. Remember in Matthew's gospel, when Jesus is talking to Peter, and he says, Peter, upon you... I will build my church. Matthew 16. Jesus is talking to Peter. This is where Jesus made Peter the head apostle. He says, Peter, upon you I will build my church. He didn't say, Peter, upon you I will let you build your church. He said, I will build my church. So Christ is the head of the church. And the second part of question number one. We know Christ is the ultimate head of the Catholic Church. The second part is, who is the leader of the Catholic Church on earth? Who? The Pope. This is the Pope's role we talked earlier. He is leader of the church. Is he ultimately head of the whole church? No. no! Christ is head of the church. But he's the leader on earth. Why is he leader on earth? Christ isn't walking the earth. If Christ were walking on the earth, he'd be head of the, the leader of the church, Catholic church. But he ascended to heaven. But the Pope is the leader of the church. So far so good? Okay. Okay. We're moving on. Let's now look on our quiz on question number 12. Because this falls into line now. But what we're talking about, what we've been doing here in our classes is establishing a base. And what we're doing, we're building upon this base. So that leads us logically now to question number 12. 
Question number 12, a real simple question. What are the four marks of the church? The four marks of the church. What is it? We say it every week at Mass. You better know this one. We believe in one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic. Those are called the four marks of the church. These, are another, in other words, are the characteristics that are that make up Christ's church. These are the characteristics that must be present in His church. And all four of them present in His church. Well, let's take a little in-depth look. Remember, it's important to know the right answer, but it's more important to know why they are what they are. Okay? So, let's do that. And again, who is ultimately in charge of the church? Ultimately, Christ. That's why we're called Christians. Christ is the base word. He's in charge. So Christ established the church. He's the head of it. And he defined its structure, how it's to operate. So ultimately, we have to go to him to determine what are the correct components of his church. So, let's do that. Let's go to the absolute head and learn about the components of the church. And remember, back to authority. This is, if I want to leave with one thing with you when coming to all these classes, when it comes to the Catholic faith, remember authority. This is the key that separates the Catholic Church from every other church out there. And why does authority separate us from every other church out there? What are our sources of authority? Magisterium, tradition, and the Bible. Remember this. These three are our sources of authority in our church. And when we use all three sources, everything has to agree. There can't be contradiction. Okay? So let's learn about the characteristics of Christ's true church. And it's always when we do anything in our faith, we always go to sources of authority. So let's do that. But let's go back to a source of authority that existed a long time ago. Let's go back to a source of authority around 325 A.D. Now, you're all experts here. Were all three of these sources of authority in existence in 325 A.D.? No. Which one didn't exist? Okay. So let's toss this one out for now. Just in our examination here, I'm not negating this as an authoritative source, but right now, 325 A.D. At that point in time, we had the magisterium, or the church, and oral tradition as authoritative sources, right? All right. Well, what was going on? Again, it's so important to understand the history of our church. So many Christians have no idea what happened after the book of Revelation was written until 1800. It's a blank. But we have to understand what happened in that early church. 